If you've ever overestimated your benching capability and almost died, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, my often forgotten, but it's most certainly not by me, transferable machine guns. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a very interesting transferable machine gun, uh, this piece of shit right here. So th this is a uh, Mac 11, and uh, there are so many things I wanna say about it right now. Um, it is tiny, it has a psychotic firing rate, and I've been kind of forced to review it. But in any case, we're gonna talk about it. This is clearly gold plated. That means you know that I prestiged up on this guy or leveled up. What is it, procedure leveled? What do you, what do you call it? What is it in Warzone, guys? No one? I don't actually know, I don't play anymore. Useless. <laughs> Hope you guys will stay tuned as we talk about the Mac 11. But before we do, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We love them. They've supported the channel for a long time. So go and check them out and say thank you very much. And of course, we cannot forget primary arms. If you're looking for awesome optics at a great price or many other things, go ahead and check them out. We love their... Uh, they're compact optic. It's very awesome. We actually just did it on the 8.6 video. So go and check them out. They're awesome. And of course, if you're doing a little bit of dry fire, you can make that dry fire way better uh, by using Mantis. So Mantis is a laser system that you can fit into many different weapons and allows you to see where you're, um, where you're aiming, actually what happens when you actually dry fire. And also they have recoil assimilation mechanisms as well. They have apps that link everything together. It's really cool. And if you want to enhance your dry fire, do it. We all do it on the crew and we actually love Mantis. And then they decide to sponsor us, which is cool because we love their stuff already. So thank you, Mantis. And of course, unlike the camera that this is filmed on and the phone that you're watching this on, AAC Ammunition is made in the US of A. Go give them a lot of love. We used a bunch of their ammo in this video. So thank you guys. So let's talk a little bit about the Mac 11. So the Mac 11 is the younger, smaller, bullied little brother of the Mac 10. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Mac 10. It comes in many different calibers, nine millimeter, 45, if you're a Chad. But the Mac 11 is in 380, and it is a very basic, um, barely functioning um, submachine gun, but it does function. And when it does function, it's pretty psychotic. So this was made in the 1970s, approximately 1972. And it, although it has been fielded by several militaries and uh, several special operations forces, I can actually find uh, little to no evidence that it has actually ever been used in combat. And if it has been used in combat, I can find nothing good about it. So generally this is um, widely considered just not a very good firearm. Very famously, it was said that this weapon is good for fighting in a phone booth, i.e. at very close distances. So funny enough, we decided to test it out and see uh, how accurate we could be with the Mac 11. So um, I challenged my camera guy, Micah. I do want to give him a, a quick out. Um, Micah has fired zero rounds on the Mac 11 at this point. I have fired uh, 900. So it's not exactly fair, but to be clear, that, that 900 rounds went by in, I don't know, 20 seconds. So, all right, let's get to the video. All right, we have the Mac 11 right here, about 1,200-ish RPM. Uh, you add in the buffer that we have in there, about 1,400, so then you add a suppressor. About 1,600-ish. And uh, we're going to see. We're going to have a competition, Micah. Competition. And we're going to see who can get the most rounds in the A zone from about Chicago distance. Um, I think I'll get, like, there's not really a good way to aim this. So I'm going to say I'm going to get, like, five or six in there. All right. All right, let's find let's out. Let's see it. Okay, hit me. Stand by. Yeah. Beep. <laughs> Holy shit. No way. <laughs> Yo, dude, I put all 50 in the A zone. Wait, that's crazy. Am I the main character? <laughs> she good? Okay, yeah, you got more, you got more. She good, okay. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm, but the, pro I, the problem I have with yours is you didn't shoot it Chicago style, so. Um, if it's a Chicago drill, you should shoot it Chicago style, so go ahead and hit me whenever you're ready. You can criticize my own channel. Stand by, beep! <laughs> go ahead. Check the, uh, Technically, check this is a better Chicago drill because what you want to see in a Chicago drill is you to hit what you weren't intending to. You want it to go to the neighbor's dog, the neighbor's house, some random lady at a grocery store. You, whatever you were trying to hit, you shouldn't hit it. So you, you failed miserably. So as you can see, the real winner was actually not being accurate at all. I actually lost that match. So as you can see, it is possible to be accurate with the Mac 11, well, roughly accurate. 
Um, but it is certainly difficult, and that's owed to several things about it. But before we get into that, let's talk about the basic operating principles when it comes to the Mac 11. So the Mac 11 right here is a straight blowback design. What that means is every time the round is fired, the pressure from that round being fired is going to push the bolt back, that spring is going to resist all the way back, and then it's going to cycle forward and fire again. As long as you're holding the trigger to the rear, that will release the sear. So you can see here, it is fired from an open bolt, and when you hold down the trigger, it's going to fire, and if I keep that trigger depressed to the rear, it's going to continue to fire until I release, and it'll go back to that open position. A little bit scary if you've never dealt with an open bolt weapon before. So to flesh it out for you a little bit, you have the Mac 11, A1 technically, uh, which is a 3.5 pound weapon, which requires the bolt to be heavy in order to slow down the cyclic rate. Um, as heavy as a bolt is, which takes up a lot of the weight on the Mac 11, it's still a 1200 RPM weapon. And because that bolt is so heavy and the weapon is so light, it has a distinct tendency to rise as you're, as you're firing it. And there's not a whole lot to grab onto on this weapon. You obviously can't grab out there, you don't wanna die. Um, there's nothing to grab on out here. There are some leather straps that have been made aftermarket that you can hold onto, but generally I kinda hold it together. Um, firing with one hand, I found that it was just kinda rising on me no matter what I did. So I tended to tuck it in some way, tuck it, or under my arm or to put it up into my shoulder right there. But even then, to be clear, you're not getting a really great sight picture. Um, it, it's just kind of a weird jumpy gun. Now, because the guy who owns this is severely autistic and not intelligent, uh, he also added a buffer in there. So what a buffer does is um, it's going to shorten the amount of travel that that bolt has. Because of that, that's going to increase the cyclic rate. So although this is stock about a 1200 with the buffer included in there, it's probably closer to 1400 depending on the ammo used. And in addition to that, we mostly ran this with a suppressor. A suppressor will also increase the back pressure on the weapon, further speeding it up, making this perhaps one of the fastest guns we have ever fired on the channel, uh, with the exception of the minigun. On a small weapon, uh, it, was a, it was a little bit psychotic. Um, 50 round magazine we could do in about 1.2 seconds. Um, I don't know the exact RPM on that. I'm not smart enough in math. So one of my Asians in the audience, please go ahead and calculate that for me and put it in the comments. Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. I was busy looking at the mountains of Idaho. Now, this video is sponsored by Cultivate. Now, what is Cultivate? Glad you asked. So Cultivate is a browser extension. What it's going to do is give you a little bit more clarity into what is going on in Amazon. It can save you a lot of money as well, and it is completely free. So if you don't know this already, about 50% of Amazon sellers are from China. Now you'd think that would equate to less cost, things being cheaper, but it actually doesn't. They actually end up overcharging. So what Cultivate can do for you is it can search through local stores to you or Best Buy or Walmart, and it can find those local deals or other deals besides Amazon that can save you money. So a lot of the examples that we have right here, you can save over 30% on the exact same product by getting it from either somewhere local or some chain store that's already in the United States. What this is going to do is of course, screwing over China, which is always nice. Emotional damage. But also it's going to help support your local economy, which we're a big fan of. Now, as you can see right here as well, depending on where you're shopping, what searches you're doing, you can actually earn a lot of cash back. So really there's not anything you need to be afraid of with Cultivate, it is free, you save on a lot of products. So I want you to go down to the link below, go and add it to your browser extension and save a little bit of money when it comes to Amazon. We're big fans of Cultivate, we can't thank them enough for everything that they have done for us. And uh, if you have a question about that, I'm gonna show you how I added it into my Firefox browser extension. As you can see, it's just Cultivate in the search bar, add, depending on your browser, it's gonna be a little bit different. But go and check out that link. Thank you so much, guys. Let's get back to the video. Now, when we talk about a straight blowback design, this is where something like a more complex design could have really aided in the Mac 11. So when we talk about, say, a roller delay like the MP5 system or obviously a gas operated system is going to help control that and make a much more manageable recoil. However, with those better systems, you include more weight. And so if you wanna have the lightest, smallest gun possible, this certainly does it at the uh, expense of recoil. So I understand they did what they did. And in addition to that, straight blowback is perhaps one of the most reliable uh, actions that you can actually use. It's just, you're gonna suffer a little bit. So that is the basic operating principle of it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's go through it. Let's talk a little bit about what makes this gun what it is. And um, so right here on the end, we do have a tri-lug adapter on this particular barrel. That way we don't have to use the Mac 11 
uh, specific suppressor. So we did use an Omega 9K. It's a, it's not the best suppressor, but it is a tank. Um, we ran that the entire time. It did get very hot, but uh, that, that did run really well. I was very surprised that despite being a very short can, 380 is in a particularly um, energetic round. I mean, it's enough to kill, certainly with 50 round magazine in about a second. But uh, it, it handled it really well, and the sound signature was actually quite pleasant. Um, I don't even know if EarPro is specifically uh, needed. Um, however, I, I shoot so much that you know hearing dam damage is cumulative. I want to be able to hear later in life, so I, I chose over <laughs> earring protection. Obviously, the threads down here at the bottom are for the Mac 11 specific suppressor with the tri-lug on there that's not going to fit. But um, the suppressors, you don't really see them around nearly as much. The total barrel length on the Mac 11 is about five inches, a little bit over it. So it is more than enough to get the velocity that you need on 380. It's just, you know, you're firing like an 80 grain projectile at around, you know, just over, just under, or just over the speed of sound. So depending on the rounds that you use, it can actually be um, quite pleasant to fire. Going to the front sight post right here, the sights on the Mac 11 are extremely rudimentary. And um, I would consider them almost unusable in most cases. So. On the front right here, we have your typical military type sights where you have wings to protect the front sight post. It is not adjustable. There's nothing you can do if you're uh, not impacting where you should be. Well, basically, fuck you. At the back, we have a very simple plate with a rear peep um, put into it. And uh, when you bring it up to your shoulder, it is um, a, a terrible sight picture. So looking through it right now, it's partially obscured by the bolt. And if you notice, the bolt is scalloped right there in the center with two deep U cuts, cuts to be able to see the front sight but it, it obscures your front sight picture a little bit more. Not to mention as you're firing, that whole thing is moving the entire time, also kind of messing with your sight picture. Um, and then in addition to that, tucking into the weapon, the design of the, st of the stock right here, I understand um, this is kind of an older design, but it, it's fairly uncomfortable to fire. It has a tendency to want to kind of slip up on you. So I'm just not a fan of it at all. And with the peep sight, it's just a terrible sight picture. And then in addition to that, the close to, or maybe over 1500 RPM on this weapon makes it um, just not something I used. So uh, in actual pra practical application, I tended to tuck this under my arm um, and use this at very close distance. I, I didn't have any other success otherwise. Now, one of the interesting things I think about the Mac 11 um, is that there are many uppers that are made out there that make this into a much better weapon with better stocks and everything. So if you do buy a transferable Mac 11, understand that there, there's a little bit of aftermarket support out there to give you a much more functional firearm. But we're not talking about those, but it should be noted that that is the case. If you buy a Mac 11 and you really want a functional firearm, I don't know that this is specifically the application for you. Um, on this particular model, there have been a lot of parts that have broken on this. So the selector from safe to fire has already broken off. It broke off a long time ago. And uh, it, it basically, it's just... It's, it's gonna go or it's not gonna go. There's not much you can really do about it. The Mac 11 has a mind of its own. Up here at the top right here, the charging handle is knurled so you can easily pull back on it. It's very simple to use. And then obviously um, that is a very simple mechanism. Uh, I found that on a full 50 round magazine, uh, due to the fact that the magazines are a little bit old, um, the follower is a little bit worn, the springs are a little bit worn. Um, sometimes it had a, a, a problem picking up that 50th round, that very first round. But after it kind of got the first little bit going, it, it kind of had no problem. But this weapon has been fired a lot, so there's a lot of wear on it. And there's also, depending on the trigger used, um, any type of aftermarket trigger, you, you can have a very odd steel on aluminum action going on, which causes a lot of odd wear, which can really kind of make it, um, at times, a little bit of an unreliable weapon. On this particular model right here, the extractor was somewhat worn, so that led to some extractor issues. Unfortunately, replacements are a little bit hard to come by for this specific model, so it's been a little bit difficult to replace that from my buddy who owns it. Um, but it did run steel case pretty well, but for whatever reason, it didn't like fancy ammunition. It, it, it only took bad ammunition, so it, I guess it's just punishment for its life, for what it's been cursed with. You can't give it anything nice. I guess it's like an analogy to life in some ways. <clears throat> the grip is very Uzi-like. Um, it's very straight grip. I actually prefer it quite a bit. It is a comfortable weapon to hold with one hand, although not to fire. Um, when we come up to the trigger, um, this is an aftermarket trigger, and it's fairly nice. So let's go ahead and see what we always do. We're going to go set trigger together. So putting our finger right on it right there, we have kind of pushing into it. We have immediate resistance. There's no uh, take up. A little bit of about a six, seven pound pull right there. And then, of course, uh, if you hold it back, you're just going. So let's do that one more time. Excellent. No reset, obviously. So that is your trigger on the Mac 11. Not bad. 
Um, about what you expect from a kind of older submachine gun style weapon, uh, certainly lacking by today's standards. We'll take a quick moment to take a look at the magazines right here. So we do have uh, 50 round heaters right here. Um, obviously, because this weapon goes so fast, you need a little bit more ammunition. God forbid you have like a, a 20 round mag in there, you're, you're dumping that thing in like way less than a second. So that kind of comes down to the general combat application of the weapon and the big complaints about it were that it, it, it obviously has firepower behind it, but in practical use, operator or fighter or whoever is carrying it to be able to conserve ammunition or, or really use it at all effectively, because you have to have some pretty crazy trigger discipline, especially in a combat environment, to not hold this thing down for more than a second when you see somebody running. So if you hold this thing down for a second, you're probably through almost half the magazine at the very least. Um, that's a lot of ammo to waste in a situation where ammunition is going to be extremely uh, good to have on hand to finish a gunfight. So. It's just the fire rate's just a little too psychotic for practical application, um, especially without any type of recoil mitigation mecha mechanism. I understand that like the Chris Vector is maybe not the most combat tested weapon, but um, has some recoil mitigation in order to keep the weapon on target. This does not, and it's also a weaker caliber. Obviously, if you get the rounds on target, you know, 50 plus rounds in a little over a second is incredible. It's just, um, you know, combat doesn't always give you those those great opportunities to put that much um, into somebody. So I guess if you're concealed carrying this, that could be pretty cool, but uh, that's a topic for another day. Um, as far as the magazine release is concerned, it is one of the older magazine releases. So it's a simple heel release right here. So once you insert that magazine in, always push pull, especially with this guy, it's a little stiff. You can hit that magazine release and then rip that guy out. Um, they are not smooth to insert. Uh, they do not drop free. Um, that's all you, baby. Now there's a couple weird quirks about it. So we'll talk about the stock for a moment. So when the stock is in, you can get a mag in, um, you can fire. However, um, you're not able to retract that stock when that magazine is in is going to hold it up. So, so that stock, in order to pull it out, you're going to flip down your shoulder piece and then you're going to pull that straight out. If you don't flip that up, it's going to catch on the rear sight. And then you can work that weapon. However, it's not going to collapse back in at that point because it's going to get caught on the magazine right there as a quick note. Fuck. General little quirks of Mac 11. Now, when it comes to the stock, it is a simple wire stock right there. Folds in. This weapon can get very compact. For the shoulder piece right here, um, to collapse that, you're going to squeeze it at the base right there and you're going to fold that in and you have a very compact weapon. Um, Generally, I think to make this a more controllable weapon, it's definitely good to have that sock out to at least tuck something because without it, um, even two-handed, this is not the best weapon to control. Even two-handed, it's a little bit of a bitch. So overall, we have the Mac 11 right here. There's not a whole lot to talk about to this weapon. It's a very simple weapon. Um, these are transferables at this point. That means that they uh, cost insanely more than what they were to manufacture, which is probably like, 50 bucks or something. So that's kind of the unfortunate part. If you want to get one, they're like closer to 15,000 at this point or nine to 15,000, which is crazy. Just not a very combat effective weapon. Not a very effective weapon. If you if you carry this under your, in your, you know, in your coat, like that's actually pretty cool. It's pretty <laughs> giga jet right there, but I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be looked upon uh, terribly favorably um, if you were to empty 50 rounds into somebody in like a second. That doesn't seem like a good idea, right? Doesn't seem very defensible in court. I don't know, no one's answering me. I don't think it would be. In any case, Mac 11, no, <laughs> just don't do it. This is gonna be a hard no for me. Although, very cool, and if you shoot it enough and do well with it enough, you get the uh, get the gold, the gold uh, coating on it, which makes it a, a great weapon at that point. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, you can train with this a lot, and I still don't think it's a combat effective weapon. So get something that's a little bit more effective. Um, don't focus on this little guy right here, but get out there, get training, get good with whatever you have except for this. And uh, that's what really matters. I, I just want you guys to be really well trained. That's what matters to me. So with all that being said, we got nothing else for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. All right, final thing for you guys, dad advice. Um, it's a good one. Actually, we'll do a little bit of father advice for you. Um, nobody's going to remember uh, that you stayed late for work except for your kids. Fair little thought. See you guys later.